people bloody love The Walking Dead, and who can blame them? It's a pretty good show, and even with a steep drop in ratings recently, remains one of the most popular on television. There's high stakes drama, the unfurling of the worst sides of mankind, and let's not forget, plenty of gore. Also, eye patches. The show is far from perfect, however. Sometimes its attempt at drama misses the mark, sometimes logic is taken aside and shot like the family dog, and sometimes Dale was super annoying. With this in mind, I'm Jules, your Southwest Shuffler for WhatCulture.com, and here are nine problems with The Walking Dead that nobody wants to admit. Number nine, the zombies kinda suck. When it comes to aesthetics, the shuffling, shambling whores of the undead are pretty top-notch. They're all decayed and limbless, endlessly dripping with various oozes, and the whole act of looking at them is uncomfortable at best. But when it comes to effectiveness, they're a little bit lame. Honestly, how did these guys manage to ravage the world so totally? Rick's first encounter with a walker doesn't even involve any walking. It's a legless, emaciated, and altogether pathetic thing. He kills it easily, and while I'm aware that this point was to show his first steps in the new world, it didn't exactly place the walker as a powerful opponent. As the show has gone on, the survivors have gotten a lot of practice in felling walkers, to the point that they rarely pose any sort of threat. The real horror comes from humanity, which is a lovely twist, but kind of leaves walkers on the fringes of their own show. Number 8. Everyone still looks pretty good. This is more a general complaint for all apocalyptic tales. Without bathing, makeup, and hair removal products, how the hell is everyone looking so damn good? I don't even want to imagine the stink that this lot must be giving off with the combined sweat, blood, and guts lifestyle they lead. It's especially weird when characters like Rick and Daryl seem to look filthy as time goes on, but almost everyone else seems to maintain an almost Hollywood-like appearance. It's just a little thing which, for the more pedantic viewer, can pull them out of the experience, especially when you see how blindingly white their teeth are. It's not a deal-breaker for my love of the show at all, but I do wonder how much you'll notice it now I've pointed it out. You're welcome. Number 7. The games are way better While the source material adaptation is led by the TV show, The Walking Dead has seen numerous spin-offs, including a bunch of video games. At the top of this digital pile of bodies is Telltale's The Walking Dead. Seriously, these games are outstanding, and they stand a good chance of making you cry harder than waking up from a coma only to find your wife left you, your dog died, and they cancelled Firefly. Yes, you were in a coma that long. Borrowing the world and art style of the comics, but taking them off in a totally new direction, the Telltale Walking Dead games chronicle the struggle for survival first of escaped convict with a heart of gold Lee, and then adorably tragic orphan girl Clementine. The pacing, dialogue, and character dynamics of said games have totally left the TV show in the dust. Herschel's farm, you spend about five minutes in one here. Annoying characters, almost everyone gets their comeuppance. This, coupled with the sense of agency you get from games, makes the experience a focused and more controlled one than the TV show's often fluctuating levels of quality. Number 6. What about the rest of the world? Whilst the enclosed nature of The Walking Dead makes for some intense television, after a while you can't help but thirst for some wider context. It's previously teased that with the trip to find a cure in Washington, but that was all for naught. The first season also hinted at this somewhat with its finale, as the group made their way to the CDC, where there was a similar search for a cure which culminated in the revelation that everyone on Earth was carrying the zombie virus and that it was dying that would activate it. Ooh, a uh, vicar. It was such hopeless news that the scientist who discovered it ended up blowing himself up. Since then, however, there hasn't been a whole lot of info on how the rest of the world is doing. Is it just the US and Mexico? What about Canada? Europe? Africa? Not a clue. Number 5. Daryl isn't the most interesting character. People adore Daryl Dixon, and it's not hard to see why. In a show which has frequently starred totally useless characters who spend more time bleating about their feelings rather than dealing with the fact that there are ravenous, brain-starved ghouls clamoring to chow down on them, Daryl is a refreshing exception to the norm. Stoic to the point of silent and handy with a crossbow, he was everything the rest of the cast wasn't. So relatively, he's a pretty cool character. In isolation, though, Daryl just doesn't add up. He's a relatively one-dimensional member of the group, as proven by the few times he struck out on his own and, well, it's all been kind of boring. Remember when he decided to go find that doomed little girl in the second season, fell into a ravine and hallucinated his racist brother making fun of him? Yeah, that was a bit rubbish, wasn't it? It all comes down to his motivations, which are muddy at best. He just seems to fit his agenda to whatever the group needs, while at the same time trying to always be the tough guy. Because of this flip-flop writing, it makes his character seem very flat in a show rich with depth which makes him stand out a fair bit. Number 4. The cast is too big 
Whilst they've been pretty ruthless with killing people off when they've outstayed their welcome, the core group that traverses the desperate plot lines of The Walking Dead is bursting at the seams. The early seasons were principally the Rick Grimes show, and he became the centre around which the rest of the cast orbited. Which didn't make a lot of sense. The initial encampment got cut down to size sharpish, which was good because in no way was a weekly audience going to be able to keep track of two dozen starring roles. Unfortunately, the writers didn't learn from that and continued in the same vein. That meant we ended up with characters like T-Dog and Tara, and now with all the new communities, we've got dozens of characters vying for screen time, but few of whom are worth caring about. There are characters who are there just to fill out the numbers and don't do much else, existing in the background almost like extras that you feel the need to pay attention to, but rarely do. It may seem harsh, but it's probably just best to shed all that dead weight. Number 3. Robert Kirkman one of The Walking Dead's greatest assets might also be one of its greatest hindrances. The comic book was created by writer Robert Kirkman and artist Tony Moore. The show has thus far been happy to deviate from the comics on multiple occasions. But when they're so happy to throw out that much of the comic books though, they should be equally enthusiastic to ignore some of the other problematic parts of Kirkman's work. In the earlier days, a big problem was his depiction of women, who for the most part seemed to follow some sort of very old school gender dynamics, either washing, cooking or cleaning. While it's made improvements on that front with some truly strong women, it still struggles with sticking to elements of Kirkman's work, namely the formulaic and repetitive nature which plagues every season, and the fact he's going to keep the comic running and running. Number 2. Everything is finite For a show called The Walking Dead, there's a hell of a lot of walking and not a lot of dead. The writers have since said that they've regretted it, but they put a ticking time bomb front and centre at the end of that first season. Yes, everyone is carrying that zombie plague with them, dormant, ready to get going as soon as they pass on. That means ultimately, however long the characters survive, their attempts to do so are meaningless. The show is totally lacking in hope. The world of The Walking Dead is a world of decay, where everything is finite and yet characters like Rick Grimes continue to go from strength to strength so long as the actors' contracts aren't up. Things are supposed to be falling apart, but when you look at things, they really aren't. And number one, it needs an ending. One day, The Walking Dead is going to have to have an end. I mean, the series focuses on the long-term repercussions of living in a world where death is waiting for you around every corner, be it your fellow man or those pesky ghouls who want to have a little nibble on you. It's a lot longer than your average zombie story to be sure, but it's got to end sometime. But besides that one reference to the virus, there hasn't been any indication that the series is building to any sort of endgame. The three-act structure is mostly non-existent when you've got a serialised drama like this, but it's definitely not going to go on forever, even if AMC seemingly want it to. How will it end though? Well, I mean, you could watch the video I edited for Ben on 10 crazy ways the show might end on what culture feed us more, but it could also be something boring like ratings. A sudden disinterest by the viewership at large could see the show quickly cancelled. If that happened, how on earth would The Walking Dead end? Would everyone be killed off? Would Rick and the gang walk off into a sunset facing an uncertain future? Both of those would be inherently dissatisfying. At some point, The Walking Dead will reach some sort of finale. Right now, though, it doesn't seem like they're planning for that one bit which probably means it isn't going to end well. And that's our list. Got any other bits of The Walking Dead you're not loving? Well, let us know about them in the comments section below. And why not swing by whatculture.com for more news and daily articles like this every goddamn day. I've been Jules for whatculture.com. You can follow me on Twitter at RetroJ with a zero. And I will speak to you soon.